Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric and today I watched WWE Super Showdown 2020, which was broadcast on February 27th, 2020. Okay, so um, this broadcast in the morning, uh, I'm watching here in Denver. Um, so the kickoff show started at 9 a.m. Um, and I had an, uh, an eye doctor appointment at 9 a.m. And so I did not watch any of the kickoff. Um, and I guess it was the OC versus Viking Raiders was the only match that was on there. And I think the OC won. I'm not sure. They did like a recap and I wrote, started writing it down. And then I must have like stopped paying attention while they're recapping it. And I forget. And I missed two actually actually won that match. But um, I am very, very excited for uh, for how the uh, eye doctor went. Uh, every, everything went really well. Uh, I didn't have to do the air puff thing. I, I guess they outlawed that now. They didn't outlaw it, but they have better technology now. So they don't have to, I, that's my least favorite thing, uh, in the past about the eye doctor, I, about going to the eye doctor. And, um, I think that's part of why I hadn't gone for so, so long it was just in the back of my head thinking about that part of the experience. They don't do that anymore. And it's great. Um, it is still kind of uncomfortable, uh, to, to have a really bright light shining into my eyes, but that's way better than having that puff of air. And then I'm like, you, you know, but, uh, anyway, yeah, the, the exam went really well and I got my, uh, a, a new pair of glasses ordered. I'll have it in a couple of weeks. Really excited for that. Um, because, uh, the, the glasses I have. They have uh, transition lenses, and uh, they're like six years old now. And they the the molecules of what the 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 photosensitive stuff, or whatever, have been degrading over all that time. And now they have my glasses have sort of a yellow tint to them, and um, that's that's not ideal when I'm working with uh, you know drawing and painting stuff with in all different colors. So yeah, it was, I'm I'm well overdue for a new pair of glasses and I'm really excited for, um, w when they come in. But, um, anyway, so that's why I missed the, <laughs> the kickoff show. And that's the most interesting thing in this episode. Uh, I'm just going to fire through all this other stuff. Uh, but, but no, this, this, this show did have some, some entertaining moments, uh, like great individual things happened um and i really enjoyed those uh but overall there there wasn't really any match that stood out a whole lot as being great as there's there there was not a match of the year contender on this entire show it was all just like oh just like okay with some standout moments but no stand up sound out actual matches and all that um I was thinking before uh, we got into the title matches, that would be kind of funny if all of the title change, t uh, if all of the titles changed hands, and it almost seemed like that was going to happen. But the, I guess the one that, the, it, okay, I'll get to it. Anyway, uh, uh, the first match of the main card, uh, we had the the, the Tuike uh, Mountain Trophy Gauntlet, uh, which started with Lashley versus our Truth. Um, our truth won s somehow. Uh, Lashley was mad and beat him up. Uh, then we had our truth versus Andrade, and I was like, "Why is this? Why is this taking so long? Uh, Andrade should defeat our truth like immediately because he just got beaten up by Bobby Lashley." Um, but there's like some t thing where Andrade went for that back elbow, but they hit their heads instead, and then our truth like fell on top of Andrade, so our truth won. And then our truth versus Eric Rowan. Uh, he was like getting too close to, to Rowan's cage. And so, uh, Rowan, uh, used the stairs to, to beat our truth up some more. And so Rowan was disqualified. And so we came, came down to, uh, our truth versus AJ styles. Um, AJ styles finally defeats our truth. And, uh, with a calf crusher, he taps out. And then his next opponent is Ray Mysterio and the music hits and AJ is smiling. AJ smiles. Uh, because Ray Mysterio does not come out and his music comes on again. 
He does not come out. Cut to backstage. Rey Mysterio is getting beaten up by the OC. Uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. And uh, AJ goes over to, to, to the referee. He's like, an outside one. An outside one. I won. I'm the last competitor. It's like, do it. And then he goes over to Mike Rome and the timekeeper, like, ring the bell. I won. And then Mike Rome refuses to do it. Heroic. Great guy. Uh, and then he, uh, Mike goes and talks to the referee. And the referee says, oh, yeah, they have to till the count of 10 to get to the ring. And so AJ says, all right, start counting. And he's counting along with him. But then uh, we cut to backstage and we see that Carl and Luke have been beat up instead of uh, of Ray. I don't know what happened to Ray. He must have ran away or something. But uh, they're all beat up on the ground. And then we see the boots and the coat step into frame. And then the, the lights go out. The music comes on. The Undertaker arrives. But through all this, this is absolutely like a 100 count. But um, I think that um, the Undertaker's music causes people to forget how forget numbers and how to count and the sequence of numbers so that's what i'd say is the explanation for that but um anyway so uh the undertaker hits aj styles with a choke slam and pins him for the win so that's the first squash of the night of a um of a part-time person over a uh, a full-time person uh then we have so th- this is definitely going to set up for wrestlemania i think this is what i'm most excited for from what happened on this show um aj styles versus the undertaker uh i can see aj saying like hey i wasn't prepared for you i didn't know you were going to even gonna be here um and also i already had a grueling match against our truth before that even though he totally destroyed our truth easily but uh, I see him using all of that as excuses why he uh, he 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 wants a rematch, so he can defeat the Undertaker, so he can be only the third person to defeat the Undertaker at WrestleMania. Wow! How I I don't know how people would react to that. People are already reacting like very angrily to stuff that happens later on this show. But anyway, um, then we had the New Day defend their. Uh, uh, SmackDown Tag Team Titles versus The Miz and Morrison. Um, Man, there is this this move. So Kofi, he jumps over the top rope, and then he landed flat on his back right on the ground, all the way to the ground from jumping over the top rope. It was ridiculous because The Miz just, he noped right out of there. He got right out of the way and... Kofi just goes straight into the ground. That looked so painful. I have no idea how is he is. I don't know how he's able to walk and then wrestle to finish the match. Oh, it's crazy. But um, uh, they they cheated and used a chair. Kofi was already like you know destroyed from jumping out of the ring, but then he gets hit by a chair as well. And um, I think it was the Miz uh, who got the pin. And so we have new SmackDown Tag Team Champions, and I've just been waiting for this to happen. Like this has been building since John first arrived. It's two months in the making here, so I'm I am pretty excited for them. But man, Kofi, how are how 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 is how would you do that? I don't know. It's crazy. They'll probably talk about it on the New Day podcast. Um, the feel the power is it feel the power is that the name of the po- i can't remember the name of the podcast um then we had angel garza versus umberto Carrillo. uh angel won that match i don't remember any specifics from there uh then we had seth rollins and buddy murphy or sorry murphy versus the street profits um i was really hoping that the street profits would win here uh and continue the all the titles changing hands but Buddy got the pin after a little bit of stomping help from Seth Rollins. Um, so uh, <laughs> Matt pointed out that uh, when they say uh, Murphy and Seth Rollins, it sounds like Rollins is both of their last names. And so I suggested, oh, maybe maybe that's part of their conversion into the, the Seth's church or whatever. 
that they all change their last names to Rollins, but they uh, only go by their by a singular name, so it's not confusing. So we have we have Murphy Rollins, we have Akam Rollins, and Rizar Rollins, all part of the Rollins family, and maybe they'll call it that at some point. But I think Church of Rollins is a little bit better, or Church of Seth. But anyway, uh, moving on from there. Uh, so Seth and Buddy remain the the the, the Raw Tag Team Champions. Uh, then we had Dolph Ziggler versus Mansoor. Uh, I I kind of want to start calling all these Saudi Arabia shows uh, Mansoor Mania uh, because he he has always had matches. He didn't have one at the Greatest Royal Rumble. I don't think. Maybe he appeared in the rumble but i i I feel like he was signed during that like week but um he's been uh, featured on everyone since then and uh he always wins and uh he's he's a cool guy i i I like him he's he's a great talker and uh he's pretty 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 solid but anyway uh mansoor wins uh, uh and also robert rude was ejected from ringside by the referee very early on in the match uh, then we had Brock Lesnar defend the WWE Championship against Ricochet. He just destroyed Ricochet. Ricochet didn't get like any moves in at all, so it was very quick. Um, it did not have the same kind of. It was not the same kind of thing as as we saw when Brock fought uh, AJ Styles or Finn Balor or Daniel Bryan or 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 Seth Rollins. He just destroyed him, and that's kind of a bummer, but. It was, it was, I saw a swift justice or a swift revenge for, uh, what Ricochet did at the Royal Rumble, uh, at, uh, Brock's hands, uh, the revenge was at Brock's hands. Um, so yeah, he got hit by a, a bunch of suplexes and an F5 and was pinned. Right, yeah. He went, Ricochet went right for it. He went for that, that drop kick and Brock just knocked him right out of the air. Uh, then we had Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin in a steel cage match. Um, I really like that Cur- uh, Cor- that Corbin, that Kermit. Uh, I really like that Corbin had chainmail, um, although he did take it off before the actual match started. But that was a cool addition to to go with the steel cage and the 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 king thing. Um, I realized, and maybe it since it took th- me this long to realize it. Um, it's kind of a missed opportunity for this feud not to be called uh, or referred to at least every now and then as the Roman Empire, and especially when they had like people with them, the Roman Empire versus the Corbin Kingdom. Kind of, it's it's kind of perfect, but uh, maybe they'll continue feuding anyway. And we'll get to see <laughs> that develop further, but. Um, Roman Reigns wins after a Superman punch with his, with that steel chain chain wrapped around his fist. Uh, so it's uh, mighty powerful for him to, to do that. Um, then we had Naomi versus Bailey. Uh, Bailey won via, uh, oh, I forget what move she used at the end, but she had uh, Naomi wrapped up uh, in like a leg submission hold. And then she used her shirt to uh to to catch her her leg up in there and uh get a little bit more offense in there with that so i thought that was a really clever use of a shirt that they would normally not be wearing but because they're in saudi arabia they're wearing these t-shirts over their gear and i yeah i thought that was that was pretty creative i i enjoyed that uh so bailey won and is still the smackdown women's champion um and so tomorrow night, I'm sure we'll find out more of uh, what's going to happen next. Will she have to defend the championship at Elimination Chamber? Or will she get the night off so that uh, they can all fight in the chamber to see who will fight uh, fight Bailey at WrestleMania? Uh, I'm sure we'll find all of that out tomorrow. Um, and that brings us to... Oh, also a missed opportunity with Roman versus Corbin. There was some good cage related stuff. Um, and a Roman, uh, like when he entered the cage, he locked them in and then had his key. So like a lot of the story was Corbin trying to get the key out of Roman's pocket, which is, uh, it seems kind of 
<laughs> weird. Um, but I thought I, I was convinced. I, I guess I was hoping. I thought it would be funny. If one of them, whoever won the match, did it by escaping the cage and they escaped the cage. So it must it would have had to be Corbin because Roman is the one who locked the cage. He wouldn't just he, he has the key. He could just use it to get out. But um, if Corbin had a can opener for all the dog food that he likes to open up and pour on people, and maybe he likes to do that to himself now. I don't know. It might have created some weird desire in himself. But anyway, <laughs> if they used a can opener to escape the cage, like to cut open part of the cage, I thought that could that would have been kind of like a, a nice callback and a, something we haven't seen before, but... It was just a Superman punch and a pin. That's fine. And so, uh, uh, yeah, back to the uh, main event, uh, the final match of the show. We had The Fiend versus Goldberg. All right, here's a transcript of all the, the, the moves that took place. Well, The Fiend entered, or Goldberg entered, then The Fiend entered, and then the match began as the fiend was taken off his jacket. He's hit by a spear, but then the fiend got the mandible claw on the Goldberg, but he fought out of it. He hit him with a spear and a spear. And uh, Cole says, Goldberg is in hot mode. Whatever. I don't know what that means. What is hot mode? Nobody, nobody has ever used that phrase ever, ever, ever before. Hot mode. What are you talking about? That's what I'm going to be upset about in this match. They said hot mode. <laughs> so Golders, Gold, Goldberg enters hot mode. Hotberg. Uh, hits another spear. So that's four spears. And the Fiend kicks out at two. He gets the mandible claw on Goldberg again. But Goldberg hits him with a headbutt, a bunch of knees, a jackhammer, and wins the match. The Fiend starts to approach Goldberg as he's celebrating with his, his belt, but he disappears. Okay, so th two things to explain what's going No, three things, maybe. Okay. Um, so I saw a lot of people reducing the match to just being three spears and a jackhammer. It's four spears, and the Fiend did kick out after those four spears. Before the jackhammer, we had a headbutt which is enough to concuss Goldberg himself, obviously. So I'd say that's enough also to take out the Fiend. And that also explains why the Jackhammer was not good because uh, Goldberg had to sacrifice... I'm, I'm defending this part for no reason. Uh, <laughs> that's why the Jackhammer was not good, but uh, Goldberg had to sacrifice himself as much as he could to also destroy the Fiend. And so that's why that happened. But um, another thing is... Um, Oh, crap. What was the other thing? There was a... Th okay, there's a third thing. So, But the second thing is that all of the opponents that the Fiend has fought and defeated before have a previous version of themselves that uh, they get reverted back to when they are defeated. So we saw Daniel Bryan revert back to an earlier version of himself. We saw Seth Rollins do that. We saw Finn Balor do that, going back to NXT and becoming Prince Balor yet again, um, or a new version of the old Prince Balor. Um, we had uh, The Miz. He turned evil again because he was a huge, huge face, and now he's a bad guy again. Uh, and, and So that got switched. Uh, we saw who else... Who else did all of this happen to? So my point is Goldberg. Oh, I remember what the third thing is going to be. So I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so Goldberg does not have a previous version. He's always just been Goldberg. This, this, it's him. He, he hasn't had a previous version of himself. He's just been him. And so he doesn't have that previous version for Bray Wyatt, the fiend to suck the soul out of because there's not something to displace it so that's the supernatural type of thing then the third th thing is that uh the weakness of the fiend is or rather his strength comes from his opponent's fear and goldberg isn't afraid of him at all and that's 
that's the, the the source of the fiend's power and so that's another reason why the goldberg is impervious or as impervious as it could be from the fiend's uh fiend's attacks now i would also argue the fiend was nibel hit sister abigail on uh on goldberg and also he wasn't able to use like all his his like big mallet and stuff like that so i'm not upset about it i actually thought it was pretty funny and i i think it's really funny how mad like everybody on the internet is on twitter on reddit like ev- like everything like it's like it's, it's like wwe sh- shut down it's canceled no more like this is the last straw for some reason but there's so much other great stuff going on in wwe like even even if i was upset with this which i'm not i think it makes sense um and maybe i'm jumping through doing all kinds of mind uh if, g- mental gymnastics to <laughs> not be upset about it but i would rather do that and not be upset about it than like just be upset but anyway uh yeah there's so much other stuff beside that even if i was upset about this there's so much other stuff to be really really excited for everything in like nxc and all that is super exciting and uh uh some of these matches the elimination chamber matches are going to be so awesome there's going to be some really great matches at wrestlemania so it's like to, to to put all of that on just one character, quote unquote, being quote unquote being ruined, is like a lot. And like, I don't know. I kind of feel. All right, that's all I'm gonna say about it. There, there's a whole lot more I gotta say about why it's like. Just don't don't enjoy the other stuff um like in in my uh my chat on uh on whatsapp i said hey go check out this other match to like it's really really good go go watch it and you probably haven't seen it yet it's uh the february 6th episode of nxt uk uh and the main event is eddie dennis versus trent seven in a four corners street match street fight it's so great just go watch that um because it, it's really satisfying and it's a good like palate cleanser type of thing if you're upset i i recommend that if you see any match if the ending of any pay-per-view upsets you and you have not seen this match on nxc uk before bookmark it save that write it down right on the wall like in emergency watch this match and you'll just have a lot of fun i think You'll just have a lot of fun watching that match, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I absolutely also, you know, recommend watching another promotion. All that there's millions of matches, not millions, but you know, so many matches that are so satisfying that you probably haven't seen before. Um, that you could just look up like best match from New Japan, best match from AEW, like all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I've specifically want people to watch nxc uk and check out that there is other sections of wwe that is doing really really awesome stuff and other talent in wwe that's doing really awesome stuff and i think they deserve uh for the matches that they put on they uh, those matches deserve to be seen just as much as anybody else so uh if you have like a palate cleanser match let me know in the comments for this episode, wh- whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're uh, on the website and doing fa- Facebook comments, or whatever, uh, or just message me on Twitter, let me know what your like palate cleanser matches that not many people have seen, like that you would recommend. Like if you're upset with wrestling, like you're you're fed up with it or something, like what is a match that you you could just put on and be like, oh yeah, this is why I love this, this stuff. This 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 is so great. Uh, so do all that and let me know what you thought about super showdown by tweeting me at tiw podcast go to tiwpodcast.com for more reviews if you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site please share some links with your friends subscribe to itunes spotify stitcher youtube wherever you like to listen stay safe out there in all the infinite multiverses and i'll see you next time with the two-time universal champion goldberg <laughs> No, that'll be a couple episodes from now. I still have to watch NXT and NXT UK from this week. But uh, I'll see you next time here on TIW Podcast. Bye.